Yeah. Um, okay. So Ashley, um, thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, really great to speak to you. I'd like to start um, by covering something which is not related to you necessarily, but related to tennis. The French Open is on right now. Not sure it's finished, has it? Um, and uh, players have been complaining about the weather and the conditions. Give me your thoughts on that. Yeah, no, it's interesting. So obviously, during these strange times, um, we've got um, a pandemic afoot. And um, yeah, there have been lots of complaints about the French Open being held in September as opposed to May. Um, players complaining about the, the colder conditions. Um, a few players complaining about the, the different tennis balls as well. And it does play a factor. It does play, um, you know, it's not just them whinging about them feeling cold on court, but actually the, the game of tennis is, is played quite differently in colder conditions. The balls don't bounce as high. They don't react quite so much to spin. Um, so Rafa Nadal was one of the players that was complaining. It's unlike him. He's, he's not usually a, a complainer. He, he kind of gets on with things. He's a, he works hard. But um, yeah, for his game in particular, he likes playing in the heat of the summer. He's really fit, obviously, so he can kind of outlast most of his opponents in, in those hot, humid conditions. Uh, he likes the ball bouncing up higher. It suits his heavy top spin game. And so with the colder conditions, it, it kind of levels things out slightly. He is the, the king of clay, as, as uh, people call him. And actually, with these slightly colder conditions, it has or it could affect the way that he plays and, and his dominance on the surface and with, with other players as well. So, yeah, it, it sounds like they're whinging, but it, it can play a factor. Um, so, no, it's, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see how he deals with it and how the others deal with it as well. So it becomes more of a war of attrition in the cold, is it? Or, or... Yeah, I mean, in the heat, uh, the ball bounces slightly higher. So with that, the rallies tend to last a little bit longer, which favours Nadal because he likes those long rallies. He's got the fitness to kind of withstand those. Whereas on a colder um, event like it is now, the ball won't be bouncing as high. So actually the rallies become a bit shorter and it will favour players with slightly bigger serves and, and the more explosive games where they like to finish the point early. So in that way, it doesn't help Nadal. Yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, I didn't realise they were using different tennis balls. Yeah, so I don't know the ins and outs of it, but they've, uh, they've changed sponsor. And tennis balls um, have to be manufactured with the same um, size, obviously, and, and a very similar weight. But from ball to ball and from different manufacturers, there are slightly different materials. Uh, it's a very slight change that maybe you and I wouldn't feel too much of a difference between. But when you're hitting the ball at hundreds of miles per hour with the amount of spin they're hitting, it does have more of an impact. So it's just different. And, and you know, if they were to train with it for a few weeks before, and all of them would be great with those tennis balls, but it's just not what they're used to. Okay. So how would you go about, if you were coaching... Rafa or any of the other guys on the on the on the men's or the women's tour for this event how would you go about helping them cope with those changes in conditions it's um if they had time so if if the coach um and the coaching team the players knew a couple of weeks beforehand then you would simply train in those conditions um and most most of the time they are fully aware of, of what tournaments coming up in the, in the week's ahead they'll kind of acclimatize themselves so they'll go away to that country a few weeks beforehand to train in those conditions most players if they've got let's say Wimbledon booked in the diary they would come over to the UK for a couple of weeks beforehand to play a couple of the smaller level tournaments to get themselves prepared for the big grand slam which is what they're what they're training for um, if you don't have the luxury of time it's just the case of, of making the player feel fully confident in their own game it's it's such a uh, a psychological sport you know you're battling one-on-one -on -one or, or two on two if you're playing doubles and if if your player is is feeling fully confident within themselves then they're going to perform the best that they can and it's kind of limiting the the mental interference minimizing the mental interference that happens on on the match court so there's an, a, an equation i think it's called the galloway equation which is your performance is equal to your potential minus any mental interference. Uh, and that's so true on the tennis court. You know, it doesn't matter how good you can play on your best day. If the day after something's going on in your head, that's subtracting from your, your full potential. So you don't perform as well. So, you know, it's just taking that mental interference away. So if you've got somebody like Nadal, who's worried about the, the 
changing climate. He's worried about the, the bounce of the ball. Actually, that's a mental interference that's going to get in the way of his performance. So um, I'm sure, you know, Nadal, when he gets to the match court, he'll forget about all of those things. But it's just preparing your players to expect the worst and, and deal with it. You know, expect that the ball's going to bounce really differently to what you're used to. Expect that, that you're going to have the windiest conditions potentially or the sun's going to be in your eyes, whatever it may be. As long as you know what to expect when you get onto the match court, nothing's going to shock you. So uh, is there anything specific that you would do to prepare, other than just training in those conditions like you've just explained, is there any other kind of preparation that you would take one of your clients or athletes, or how, how you describe them through if they were going to go to that kind of event? Yeah, so um, a lot of hitting a lot of balls beforehand. So, you know, if you find out a couple of days before, it's just hit, getting the volume in, you know, hitting and hitting and hitting until you feel the timing and until you're used to the conditions and the, and the equipment that you're using. But really, then it's a case of sitting down and actually having an off-court session and, and really mentally preparing the player. So, you know, talking through worst case scenarios um, and then building up some, some extra resilience. Yeah. So it's, it's quite mental compared to, you know, a normal training session. Actually, if it's something that's happening the next day, you're going to have to prepare mentally as opposed to just physically, technically and tactically. Okay, great. Um, 